Hello, and welcome to part four of the segregation of duties analysis for NetSuite. In this session, we cover the rules, and in this case, we've boiled it down to four basic ones. So here's what we're going to cover today. We'll summarize the four basic rules. We'll then go into detail on each of the rules from the credit memo versus the customer master, creating vendor checks versus the vendor master, create vendor bills versus the vendor master, and create journal entry and approving journal entries. These are the four basic ones that we think fundamentally every company should look at. And as you are more sophisticated, there'll be lots of other rules, but for our purposes, we'll focus on these four. Here are the four basic rules within NetSuite that we suggest you look at. And these are actually the permissions within NetSuite, and we'll go through why each of these are important to any company. So the first one is authorizing a credit memo versus creating or editing the customer master file. The risk here is anyone with credit memo and customer's permissions in NetSuite can create unauthorized customers and be able to create me credit memos to clear the amounts due from that customer. So essentially, they could sell to friends and their friends don't have to pay for it. We don't want anyone who has the credit memo permission to also have create, edit, or full customer's permissions. And in this example, we've laid out the grid so that you can see credit memo in the D column and E customer's uh, permission in the E column so that you can compare the two. The second rule is create or prepare vendor checks versus the edit vendor master file. So the permissions check and vendors allows a fraudster or a person to create a vendor and create a check to pay the vendor. This is under the assumption that the vendor checks are printed from the system. If you have checks that are physically held somewhere else, uh, you also want to be careful so that the person who's holding the check can't also create the vendors because then they can pay. Now, if a person has the ability to print a check and create a vendor, they can create a fake vendor and an unauthorized check. This is especially dangerous if the company uses pre-signed checks or signature stamps because no one would be able to detect that a fraud occurred if the fraudster were able to do both of these things. Um, it's unlikely that someone's going to detect it. So in NetSuite, the permissions check and vendors allows a person to create a vendor and create a check to pay the vendor. In the next scenario, pay bills and vendors are permissions that allow someone to create an unauthorized payment, because that's the pay bill, and also create a fake vendor. So similar to the previous situation, a person then has the ability to pay the bills. They could create a fake vendor and make a payment to the fake vendor. It's especially dangerous if the company uses ACH or direct deposit and no check signer is needed because the person is then able to stage the payment and it will go directly to the bank. Now, no one would be able to detect the fraud if the fraud if this person had both of these permissions, they'd be able to hide it pretty quickly. In the final scenario that we want to avoid, the permissions make journal entry allows a user to create journal entries and the permission journal approval approval allows a user to approve the journal entries. Our basic rule of segregation of duties is one person should not create the journal entry and also be able to approve it. Forget fraud for a moment. We often find that calculation errors or just errors happen when one person does everything uh, from creating the journal entry, calculating everything. So it's helpful to have a second set of eyes reviewing the work. And in NetSuite, the permissions make journal allows a person to create the journal and approve journal allows them to approve the journal entries. Now, sometimes you need to have a person do both of these things because you only have a small team of one to three or even five people. So in those cases where the systems haven't implemented an approval workflow, 
we want to segregate these two permissions. What we've done for a lot of our clients is be able to have approval workflows or automatic notifications. Those are ways to mitigate or monitor the situation. In the case of an automatic notification is whenever someone both approves a journal, creates a journal entry and approves it, a notification goes out to multiple people in the department to let them know. Now this can get um, tedious because you get so many of these notifications sometimes you don't read them. So some of our clients have actually put in more of a monitoring control where at the end of a week or at the end of two weeks run a report. The system can actually run a report of all these instances and push or email those reports out to the approver. And so that helps you do the monitoring without having to do it on a daily basis. So to recap, we discussed the four basic rules and they are the credit memo versus the customer master file, the create vendor checks versus the vendor master, create vendor bills versus the vendor master, and create journal entry versus the approved journal entry. Thanks so much for your time and we'll talk to you in the next session when we go through the next detailed steps to complete this series. Have a great day.